Um, so what I learned, though, is that you should never use try. Now that you are using try and making an exception to not using try, um, well, first of all, should I explain why you shouldn't use try? Yes. yes. OK. So um, um, more. OK. So um, let's say I want to call foo.myMethod, right? But um, sometimes um, foo is nil. Well, um, OK. Let's say I want to do something like um, I want to call, I need to then check if it, if it exists. So I have to say if foo exists, then um, I could say if foo, and then I also want to say, OK, if foo exists, then call my method. So um, the, the thing, though, is rather than having to always check if foo is not nil before you call a method, you can do try, which um, just says if it's nil, it does nothing. But if it's present, then it, um, if, if the object that you're calling it on is not nil, then it calls um, the argument you pass it to. So if you say, for example, nil.try um, to s, you get nil back. Rather than if you just say nil dot to s, you get an error. Well, actually, you don't get an error. <laughs> the, uh, what's a method that will give me an error? <laughs> Hey, there we go. <laughs> OK, so um, there's some reasons why you might not want to use try for, um, for those reasons. However, um, is it jiggling maybe the cables? It should screen your filter program that you're running. The filter program I'm running? Flux. Okay. Um, OK, so anyways, that aside, so what I learned the other day was that um, there's a bug in try. So for example, let's say you might want to um, have something like um, a um, hash foo, which is just um, PDX goes to um, RB, right? And we want to do foo.try um, to A, right? And so this works, OK, that makes sense. Now, if we're passing this on nil, we get nil, and that makes sense. The case here, though, is why using tr if you use try here, you can have a bug if nil is an object that is not nil but does not have the method. So let's say we're doing um, hello.try. This returns nil, but hello is present, not nil, and if you try 2a on it, it returns a method, um, a no method error. So what you'd expect is to get a no method error or be able to handle this case. However, there's a nice little thing called try bang, which respects whether the pre whether the object is not nil, and if it is not nil, then it actually checks whether the method is defined and then does this. So pretty much, you should always use try bang and never use try. Because if the object is not nil, but rather is present but doesn't define the method, it will cover up that no method error um, bug, and you might not find out about that. That's all. Use try, bang. Don't use try, but don't use try. Nate. What if you shouldn't use anything other than the thing you want, or it's perfectly defined, and it says, why not this? OK, so if you perfectly define the interface and you don't have any bugs in your code, then you don't need to worry about this. <laughs> Maybe, but I think you'd probably, even in that case, um, I mean, unless you, unless you don't want it to raise an error in this case when it's not defined, you should probably, like, you should probably use this when you want an error to be, when you want to check for the presence of an object which is not nil but does not define the method and then deal with that case. Otherwise not. Yeah? Wouldn't this be more of a candidate for uh, nil design or null design pattern? Um, probably that's sort of leading towards not using try at all and rather handling it at a higher level. Um, Would you suggest that as opposed to like assuming like you just don't know what the object is? Yeah, I think generally what you'd rather do is you'd rather just handle this um, in a, you know, handle this in your code, whether if that's in your model, delegating to someplace else, which you could just um, you know you could 
rather than often this happens where um, you. I typically find myself using fetch and passing an array along the way. Mm-hmm. With like a hash or something. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, if you're dealing with a hash or um, some other model, sometimes you can have a method that, that handles that nil case, and then you can handle that in the code and check for it. Yeah, Lance? I just want to give a shout out to Ruby's upcoming type search application operator. Is it dot question mark or question mark dot? Question mark. It's illegible. <laughs> <laughs> One of those ones, yeah. So pretty much tries being brought into Ruby, and um, you can use one of these operators. I'm not sure which one. Um, I think it's probably question mark dot, because otherwise it's a method call. I think it's dot question mark, because question mark dot gets used in methods, or could theoretically Yeah, anyways, one of these, which is <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so try bang is the safer one. And that same reason is like, let's say you um, yeah, try bang is safer because they'll throw an error rather than concealing the bug to pass it along. And I always think it's safer to cause the error as close to where the error actually is rather than passing it along and then some other part of your code is erring out and then you're like, why is this happening? Well, it's because this is happening. Why is that happening? Because of this. So always expecting those failures. So anyways, try bang. Um, fail fast. Fail fast, yeah. That's all. So wouldn't it make a lot of sense instead of calling this, instead of calling this a bug in try to say that the expected behavior of try is that it rescues all no method errors? Yes, absolutely. Except and it doesn't. Sometimes it rescues the no method errors and sometimes it doesn't. Typically it does not. T yeah, typically. <laughs> I, I think the, the, the assumption is that, the assumption is that when you call try on a non-nil object, it will call a method. But it's not actually what it does. When you call try on a non-nil object, if the method does not exist on that object, it doesn't do anything. So hello does not have a 2a method, but hello.try 2a returns nil rather than a no method error, mm -hmm. which is dangerous unless you are intentionally doing that. Most often, the way try is used in the Ruby and Rails community is assuming the, something differently. I think try being always is sort of the takeaway. Also, Avdi Graham said this yesterday or last week, and so I'm just repeating him. Yields to authority. Have you run into this personally? I have not run into this bug personally. No. And I hope to. <laughs> Well, I, th I think the main thing is just this would, this is, it is, it's more about the, the fail fast paradigm of saying, let's say for some accidental reason, um, some object I'm dealing with gets assigned incorrectly. That could happen for a bug somewhere else. If you're using a dot try on that method, you might just get a nil when you'd actually be wanting to realize that this method doesn't, um, this object doesn't have that method and that's causing it. So it just sort of helps that fail fast. Yeah, Lance? Did you? Yeah. There's something to think about next time you you type try. So. <laughs> okay, on that. <laughs>